Why is Charles Ngagula dedicating his book to those who laid down their lives for the liberation of the country? What kind of a leader was the late O.R. Tambo? And why was the 1985 Gabriel Conference held on the 9th anniversary of the 1976 student uprisings? Why were SACP leaders such as Joe Slovo and Chris Honey popular among the ANC rank and file? What time is it? It's question time. Kotong and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Hatsedu. The translation of political freedom into economic emancipation in South Africa has become topical, with some people asking whether those who lost their lives during the struggle died in vain. It was indeed a daunting challenge for those who went into exile to keep the spirit alive, having left families and friends back home. Former Um Konto Wesizwe combatants, a secretary of the SACP, and government official Dr. Charles Ngongula has decided to tell this story from an ANC cadres perspective through a book aptly titled The People's War. The book traces the path to exile, life in the trenches, the role played by the elders in exile, as well as key events including the Morogoro and Kabwe conferences. Today is also of particular significance. It is, uh, it is the 22nd anniversary of the death of Harry Guala, also known as Man of Steel and the Lion of the Natal Midlands. A former Robben Island inmate, Guala played a pivotal role towards establishing peace in the war-torn Natal Midlands in the 1990s. Guala died on this day in 1995. Tonight, Question Time is humbled to host a man who wore many caps, Dr. Charles Ngagula. But what is Mr. Ngogula's position on the current challenges facing the ANC and many other issues. That's what we're going to be talking to him about. We are live and therefore you can call us and they have used the numbers to dial 89 our Twitter handle at question time 24. And this is question time. Dr. Ngogula, thanks very much for making time to talk to us. Well, thank you very much for the invite. Well, I was at the um, night vigil um, of Chris Honey's uh, funeral in uh, 1993 at the FNB Stadium. And Harry G made um, one of his, uh, you know, common uh, speeches there. Just talk to us about those. Well, he was, he was uh, a very courageous person mm. and uh, quite fiery. I loved his language. Mm. He spoke beautiful English, and of course, his uh, Zulu was yes. also very good. He had been a teacher before. I suppose that is why he was like that. He not only taught people uh, when, uh, rather, before he was arrested mm. and incarcerated on Robben Island. Mm. Before that, he was a teacher, you know, outside of, of, of the prison walls. Mm. But on Robben Island also, he yes. continued to teach some of the uh, inmates who yes. were there at the time. Yeah, well, one of my lecturers, uh, George Mashamba, actually was uh, his student on Robben Island. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, mm. I, I guess, well, uh, 22 years after his death, um, people... Do, would you say that uh, South Africa, and particularly the, the case that Anne really uh, uh, remembers Harry G for the role that he played, well, in as much as really uh, he wasn't the type that says let's negotiate all the time. I mean, uh, I remember one of his famous quotes was, when the IFP comes to us with pangas and guns, we're not going to meet them uh, carrying Bibles. We are going to fight, you know, and... Uh, as much as it was, uh, probably it wasn't the most appropriate thing to say at times, but Harry G would say it nevertheless. Mm -hmm. Well, he was always like that. But uh, nobody uh, in South Africa ought to forget mm -hmm. Harry Guala and uh, his contribution towards the struggle mm -hmm. for our freedom, particularly during these times. It is true that at times Harry Guala would do and say things uh, that did not accord, you know, with uh, the normal practices, mm. even inside the ANC yes. and the Communist Party. Yeah. And uh, he spoke his mind, which was uh, very, very good about him. But because he spoke his mind, 
And there came a time uh, when the Communist Party, South African Communist Party, actually suspended him. Yeah, for six months. Mm. I yeah. Mm. Well, um, that was the ANC of that time. Mm. Mm. Today, as one goes through the People's War, your book, A Reflections of an ANC Cader, as you call it, um, one can't help but uh, be able to draw the, the differences. I suffer. Mm. Well, well uh, there, there are differences. There are differences. We should have anticipated some of the differences mm. because there are many, many people who join the ANC who may not have participated in the struggle for our liberation. Mm -hmm. People, therefore, who did not grow up in terms of the ANC's principles, mm -hmm. in terms of the value system that the ANC had established. Many of them, of course, are young people who were born uh, after uh, we got our freedom, for yeah. instance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the leadership itself has changed in character because the leadership itself has many people who are not part of that core mm. of cadres who grew up in the ANC and understood, therefore, those values that the ANC was espousing at the time. Now, um, in your book, you say the ANC's wounds are self-inflicted. Talk to us about that. Yes, that is correct. And uh, I was saying that without any fear of, of contradiction. Mm. Last week, um, I had uh, space uh, in Parliament uh, to contribute, you know, towards the memory of uh, Ahmed uh, Katrada's life. Yes. Uh, where we were uh, passing, conveying condolences to his family. <coughs> At one point, I really wanted to speak to the ANC members there. And I turned and looked at them and said, there are three parties who have members who are in opposition to the ANC in Parliament. For instance, uh, Bandu Olomisa's UDM, mm -hmm. uh, Terra Likota's COPE, and Julius Malema's EFF. All of those people were once upon a time members of the ANC. Oh. But we took wrong decisions in dealing with what some people said were infractions on their part of ANC protocols. But the decisions we took were wrong. And those decisions resulted therefore in the birth of those three organizations that are now sitting in parliament in opposition mm -hmm. to the African National Congress. It's not the only thing, there are many other things that we did which have caused problems for us. Musa, you are in Durban. Musa? Hi, hello sir, how are you? I'm well, um, I think we're going to have a problem with the line. Just uh, continue. Yes, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but uh, there's some distortion there, but go ahead. Okay, yes, uh, uh, greetings to you, on uh, comrade Nagoda. I'm not sure if you can hear me now. Yeah, go go ahead. Let's try it. It's, it's not okay. perfect. Yeah, it's not the best uh, of lines. Yeah. My, my my question to the honourable member there, uh, who has held it high esteem in terms of our liberation, is that is it not the time for us to reflect that the ANC is failing dismally in terms of its policies? that its, con its constitution is unfit to deal with corrupt leaders that we have presently who are leading country. Okay, Musa, I was trying to, to really bear with, with uh, you there, but um, I seem to be battling. But I can get the gist of your question to say the ANC is battling um, with, with, with policy. Uh, is it not time, for, for instance, to acknowledge that, you know what, we are battling, maybe let's try and change uh, strategies. I mean, you say in your book, and I'll quote you, it would seem, though, that none of the leaders of the movement has the necessary political will or authority to bring everybody into line and enforce the ANC's core values. 
Instead, they complain, like some of the junior leaders in the branches and provinces, about the presence in the organizational uh, organization structures of negative forces. Yes. <laughs> you see, if I were to go back to, 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 to that uh, issue raised by the listener, uh, I do want to say that the problem we have does not relate to the policies of the ANC. Mm -hmm. The policies of the ANC are good. Mm -hmm. And uh, the policies of the ANC uh, have been able to bring this country, at least uh, raise this country from, from the problems, is, problems of the past of apartheid to a situation where many of our people have enjoyed freedom. But what is wrong mm -hmm. is the fact that then, you know, in the past years, few years in fact, there is corruption that arose within the ranks mm -hmm. of the membership of the African National Congress. Now with that corruption, there are many things therefore that went wrong. In the branches, you know, this, the, 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 what you have just read mm -hmm. uh, is from a passage in the book where I talk about the celebration of the 105th anniversary of the ANC yes. this year in January this year. Yes. And uh, I say that the leadership, mind you, what the president was reading was a statement of the National Executive Committee. Okay. And there, the leadership was actually complaining, mm. complaining about these bad things that have, have, have started to happen in the ANC. Mm. And my question is, but they are in the leadership. Why did they not put a stop to it? This is the point I'm raising. Therefore, it is not the policies of the ANC that are the problem. The problem is our inability as leadership properly to lead our people, not just those members of the ANC, but we ought to be leading the entire population of South Africa. Okay, let's go to Katleong. Uh, is it Brian? Yes, I'm how are you? I'm well, thanks for the call, Brian. No, I'm okay. I'm cool. how are you, my boy? We are bullies to Brian. Oh, hello, uh, Brian. Yes, my my congratulations, Nakula, is to ask you, uh, what is your perception, your perspective regarding the situation now in the organization in the ANC, and also what happened to the political school that the ANC wanted to establish? That's my that's my contribution. Okay. Thank you. Very much. I want to start with the last question. We did agree over many years, and we kept on going back to that discussion, that we need a political school in the organization. At one stage, we said we did not just need a building. A political school should be run across the country. In other words, mm. wherever we have branches, there has to be political education there. And there are adequate numbers of people who could do this. But unfortunately, we have not done that. It's, well, it's, Khal, Khal Mam Tante's um, defeat speech uh, in Mangaung was followed by a, an announcement by the ANC that, hey, look, Khalima is not going to be lost to the organization. He's going to be involved in the uh, political education school. And like you're saying, nothing came of it. There is no political education school that we can speak of. And as I say, I am not even talking about a building. I am talking about the fact that each one of our branches ought to have an element of their activities of political education, and that is absent. Okay. It's and, and of course, the first one is my perspective of mm. what is happening. Oh, yes. Which yes. was part of his uh, question. Yes, yes, go ahead. <coughs> Look, I must say that I am worried about some of the things that are happening. I am as worried as members of the ANC as reflected in the statement that the president read on the 8th of January this year. Yeah. I'm worried that there are divisions and some of these divisions have arisen as a consequence of the corruption that I've referred to. People want to have access to the resources of the country and those who are unable to get to that level start to have fights with those who have already arrived at the cookie jar. This, this is a serious problem that we have in the African National Congress. Let's take this episode. Sepiso, you are in the Northwest. Welcome. Hey, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call, uh, Rez. Hey, 
Yeah, greetings to Mr. Makul Nate. Thank you very much, and greetings to you as well. Yeah, uh, Mr. Makula is a revolutionary of our lifetime, and if the ANC wants to save uh, this organization going to the uh, uh, to the relegation zone. They must allow uh, people like uh, Mr. Ngwakula to lead the organization because it's one of the scars caliber in the ANC who are totally incorruptible, who have integrity, who have fought for freedom, who have a distinguished record in terms of uh, discipline and otherwise. So the ANC should save itself from corruptible uh, candidate and allow Mr. Ngwakula and their likes to lead the organization going forward. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks very much. Actually, uh, he wouldn't agree with you because he says in, in his book uh, that um, the he admits that uh, it would be awkward for today's ANC to have uh, to face what the Youth League did in 1949. However, the current situation uh, demands a response that may be awkward to make. Even finding someone outside the organization to lead it out of its turbulence and disunity. Oh, well, first of all, let me register my appreciation at the accolades that he has made about me. Mm. And right away, let me tell him that I served my stint in the ANC yes. in various leadership positions. I am now not available. Mm -hmm. But I am available to the ANC to do political education and to do whatever people would want me to do, simply as a foot soldier, not as, as part of the leadership core. And of course, the, 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 the issue that you are raising, uh, uh, you know, I was, I was putting it there as, as some of the options of the past. Mm. When the Youth League in 1949 indeed went and, 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 and motivated yes, for, for Dr. Dr. James Moroka to become yes. the president of the ANC. Who was not even a member. <laughs> he was not a member. In fact, he, at times he would forget what the uh, name of the, the organization ANC. is. And yeah. he would say it's the African Af National, National Council. Council. Yes. You see, yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I want to believe, and I suppose I'm saying this because I'm an abiding optimist, mm. that the branches of the ANC are going to find good people to lead the African National Congress. Let's go to Mdansan. Is it Tobile or Tabile? Tobile. Oh, Tobile. Tobile. Welcome, Mdansan. Thank you. Hello, my dear guy. 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 Hello, my the challenges that the ANC is facing, such as corruption, probably in 2019 will have other people breaking up and forming political parties. So with this happening, uh, ANC might lose power. Utatungagula, does he see the ANC out of power in the next coming years? And if so, what can be done at this stage to prevent that? The, 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 then the, 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 the people who are running up for the presidency, oh, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa and Kosa Zanadruma, can they save the ANC at its current state and, and, and make it to come back to its former glory days? Okay. Thanks, uh, 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 Toby Lede. Thank you. Well, I, I have a position that I'm pushing. Mm -hmm. And that position, in the first instance, is saying it would be wrong for anybody, including the African National Congress, to try to get President Zuma to step down from his position now. Okay. That would not resolve the problems of the ANC. In fact, it would exacerbate them. It would make them bigger for the African National Congress. The best way for me is that when the ANC, and I'm relying here mm. on the ability of the members of our branches, and I know they have this ability because they have started to discuss some of the problems that the ANC has, 
to choose very good men and women to lead the African National Congress. Do you have a preference? I don't have any preferences. Okay. And when they elect the president of the ANC this December, then President Zuma should step down and allow that person to be the leader of the ANC outside of parliament as well as inside parliament. In other words, that person then becomes the head of state of our country. So, so, so it means you don't agree with Sikhe um, Zigalala then? When he says what? President Zuma will serve his term until 2019. That is his opinion. I'm throwing in my own opinion. And my opinion talks to the ANC. I'm worried okay. about the ANC. And in order for the ANC to be able, therefore, to continue to rule this country and overcome the problems that we have, particularly leading to the general election in 2019, we must have someone new. Okay. Dr. Charles, we have run out of time. Um, this book, is it available already? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, I don't know what is happening okay. on the side of the... But I heard it will be launched on Thursday, so starting from Thursday, it will be available. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. It's, a, it's quite a good read. Um, I really enjoy um, reading such. Thank and you. Thanks very much for the time. That was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. From me and the entire crew, Iber Hot.